China Corel Painter 2019. Hi everybody, Steve Elliott here again. I thought I'd give Painter 2019 a try out. Um, it's only been out about a week. I've never tried any of the other versions previous to this, so I am brand new to Painter. Although I must say, I've done a couple of videos on Painter uh, Corel Essentials, Corel Painter Essentials, but that's it. So. Uh, I am aware that this is a massively complicated program. Um, I've got no idea what the learning curve would be like with this, but I want to see if I can actually produce a painting straight off out of the box, if you like. So I've downloaded the free version or the demo version. I am going to, I've, I spent about half an hour playing around with the tools, just looking at what sort of brushes that were available. I Before I downloaded this version, I had watched a couple of videos, uh, especially of Aaron Rutten, um, who's sort of the di digital painter on YouTube, and he's uh, raving about the thick paint brushes. So I thought I would have a go with those and see what I could come up with. It's not going to be a masterpiece or anything like that. I just wanted to try the brushes and see if I could do something without having to go through a massive learning curve. So here we go, let's see what happens. So I spent a few seconds looking at the opening screen, deciding whether I should click on setup or documents. And in the end, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna close this window. Uh, I'm gonna go straight in and uh, create a new file. So I called my uh, image demo painting to start with. And I thought, you know, we need to do a big painting. It's uh, pointless not pushing it to its limits. So I start off with a 28 inch by 18 inch uh, I've got there. But I think in actual fact, I changed that to 24 to 16. Um, or maybe I didn't. Anyway, it's a big painting. And one of the first thing I discovered was that you can get Corel Painter to make you a custom palette. So I imported the painting, uh, the photo that I was going to paint into Corel Painter. And it's a really simple scene, just a plowed field. There it is. And I chose an option that says create palette from picture. Clicked it and boom. There we have a custom palette. Well, that's awesome for a start, and that was so easy. After that, I deleted the um, the image that I'd loaded in. I, I wasn't going to. I'm not cheating, tracing it or anything like that. And I did create a new uh, uh, file. I've just spotted it. It was 24 by um, 16 inch, which is more more like it. And then I used the fill tool to fill in the canvas. I don't know if that's sort of something you should be doing or not. And I decided not to actually paint on the canvas. I would create new layers. And um, I was just messing around. Bear in mind, I've not used this before. I went into the uh, tool picker. I had a quick look at what you could um, do with um, adjusting brushes and things. And I thought, wow. This looks mental. It looks massively complicated. Um, I'm not going to use that, really. I'm just going to use the brushes default as they come out, and I'll change the size of them and maybe the opacity. And I went straight to the thick paint uh, brushes, and I noticed that um, the thick paint brushes create a layer called thick paint layer. So I assume that you have to paint on a particular type of layer for the thick paint. And I used a variety of brushes for this. I just went in picking brushes that I thought, just by the sound of the name, thought that they would um, be appropriate. So I'm sort of roughing in this sky and I'm using palette knives and filbert brushes and I think we've got a palette knife going there and um, just sort of getting color in. And I love this sort of muted palette that Corel Painter created for me. 
And I was also able to select colours off the colour wheel and then add them to the palette because I, I wanted a slightly more blue, brighter blue in the uh, for the distant sky below the clouds than was actually created in the colour palette. And I also, a bit later on, add a green, uh, a, a brighter, more vivid green to it. I did notice that one or two brushes, I don't know if they're older brushes that have been around for a while, weren't working at this size, looked a little bit out of focus and blurred. And so the, as you see that one there, it looks, I don't know if it's meant to be soft or it just looked out of focus to me. If I made the brush over, say, 150 pixels, um, so that was a bit of an issue. I didn't get any uh, lag, really. I didn't put the brushes much bigger than 150 pixels because of the, really, of the, uh, the sort of, the, the they started to look blurred and not uh, nice and sharp. But it, it wasn't a problem. I, I worked fine at that. And I like the palette knife. Uh, I was using that. And another thing that I very quickly got into was um, angling the actual pen. I was using a Wacom tablet for this, uh, Intuos Pro. And I could tilt the pen. And by tilting the pen, it, it actually tilted the brush. So you had a, a lot of control of um, where your thick strokes went and the thin strokes. And if you held the pen right, uh, exactly vertical, uh, it gave a different effect completely. So I've not really noticed that so much in other programs as, as I had in this. Um, I don't know why. Maybe, maybe um, it's just the little icon perhaps on the screen, the, the little brush that you can, you get a really uh, good visual of of the angle of your brush so that's maybe what sort of tempted me to um do that and i was creating several layers and blending the colors and mixing them and having a, a absolute blast so as you can see i am achieving a uh painting with corel painter 2019 straight out of the box as it were um no real learning curves at this stage it it works pretty much like every other painting app like art rage or any of the others but i know i'm only just scratching the surface and uh, i'm going to do i think i'm going to do some more with this i've got 30 days to play around with it and i'm tempted to buy this now i don't know whether i should be buying art rage uh, sorry whether i should be buying rebel um, version three or this, I probably will at some point buy them both. But at the minute, I've kind of um got to make a decision which one because they're both quite expensive. Uh, Rebels a lot cheaper than this actually, but you um you can get um codes promotional codes. I know Aaron Rutten's uh, as a um a promotional code to get about $100 knocked off, so it does make this a lot more affordable, but um, I can't really stretch to buying them both at the minute, so what what would, what would one would you buy if you was um, going, uh, I had to choose between one or the other? It'd be interesting to find out which one um, you'd be more interested uh, in, or which one you would want to get. I know this watercolour brush is in here, I haven't tried them. I've I've never watched a video on watercolor in Corel Painter, so I have no idea of uh, what they are like and the standard. But I do like this thick paint. It really is very very realistic looking, and I think it makes. A, I hate to say it because I'm a big fan of Art Rage, but I think it makes a better job of Art Rage. Uh, you can certainly work on a bigger scale. Um, I think it performs about the same. I don't think there's um, a, a deal of difference there. The actual reference photo, I'll, I prefer it in, in this. I thought it was easier to manage than in 
uh, Art Rage. I think Art Rage sometimes it's a bit difficult to grab the corner to enlarge it, but this this I didn't have any problems with this. It was a lot easier. Um, I'm loving this limited palette, and I'm loving the palette knife where you can scrape big uh, dobs of thick paint on there to sort of put in those highlights for those little wispy clouds. I really uh, got into that. Uh, liked it a lot, and the sort of te the just the texture of the paint to um, create that cloud field was really loads of fun to do. So I, I really liked this app a lot and it is definitely um up there it, it, it is probably uh, the the best app there is I, I would say but that's reflected in the price obviously and i'm really uh, i'm looking forward to sort of i think to go any further with this i need to do a bit of research and watch a few videos because there is a learning curve to get past that initial standard uh um just using the brushes uh i'd like i've not looked at the um how you can use the texture of the paper i know you can um use the texture to affect how the uh paint comes off of the brush so uh, i'd be really interested to uh play around with that and see what i can do but look at the texture there the close up look how sharp that is and that you can almost feel that thick paint you, you rub your fingers over it, you'd get a ridge of paint um that looks so cool and it would have been fun to do some of the my painting in the style of pictures in this um so as i say it's just a simple painting um nothing too complicated i just wanted to try out that thick paint uh, i had a lot of fun painting this it's not a masterpiece so I'll, I'll grant you but it is a painting and it i did it without uh any real uh, problems of finding tools they all were in where you would expect them so that is it that is the end of my tryout of corel painter 19 uh, if you've liked this a thumbs up would be much appreciate much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing I have lots of videos all about digital painting and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.